dollar watch. No I'm taking all Thanks for telling me how much it cost. Oh well, no, I know you got a Roly. I mean, something like that. That's what I was saying. Like, yeah, these are like this was under a hundred, I think, like ninety eight. Yeah. The other one, I my favorite watch right now, even more than the Roly, is that other MB black one. one. It's more like a dark graphite. I don't know what it's called, but it's nice. Two hundred beans, bro. Nice, nice. Yeah, but so outside of uh, it being all over the fucking Disney films, then, the, you know, in that video that I posted on my page, it shows the Pope. This is the Pope on his garb wearing the pedophilic signs. What's the pedophilia sign? Uh, the triangle. Like the, that, what do you call it? Not concentric, but it just, it's like spirals inward. It's a triangle. Oh, oh okay. Kind of like. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like. This is fucking weird. I, I don't know what's going on with our world, man. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you think these are just fucking coincidence connections. Not coincidences, but like just reaching at these connections that aren't really there. But you know what? The th- like, it's it's a known thing. You know what I'm saying? It's sort of like the rainbow. Like the rainbow, everybody knows that that's the gay flag. Yeah. You're not going to put it on something that, you know, knowing that it, 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 it's just weird. It's strange to me. So test one, two. Yeah, I was hoping that we could just skip the pedophilia talk for today. <laughs> it's 2023. Let's think of something else. But yeah, like, we're all over that. Yeah, like, whatever. <laughs> if they're fucking kids, just leave them. You know, like they're they're grown adults. They can do what they want. Yeah, I noticed Dave was a comment. He, I don't know if he was trying to post like rebuttals to the whole my pyramid thing i find that stuff very interesting oh the pyramids yeah yeah it's man. crazy it's I, I go into like these little phases man where i'm just fucking incredibly intrigued and my mind is blown at when you start going down the rabbit hole of like the ancient wonders of the world the pyramids <clears throat> you know it's wild there's another one too not stonehenge fuck i wish i remember what it's stonehenge called. is part of that whole I was I was thinking in my mind like okay if we if humans were not on this planet what would it look like you know with just like these pyramids all across you know the globe well, bro who do you think built the pyramids that's what I'm saying if like, there were no humans there would be no pyramids I don't know <laughs> what do you think dinosaurs built them <laughs> I don't know like, man fucking- <laughs> I don't know who built them. There's there's You're like wild, no bro. there's no way that humans could have built them. There's Wait, no way. Aren't there? Inside pyramids, like, you know, like hieroglyphics and shit on the wall? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's it's pretty safe to assume that was done by people. Like, they're in the shapes of people, aren't they? Like, hieroglyphics aren't some of the images, like little stick figures of people? Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. So, Egyptologists, they, they we use the hieroglyphics, and they wrote in some other kind of, not, uh, some other kind of way. It's called, it's called something else, but hieroglyphics. Cursive. Yeah, <laughs> um, and they literally documented their whole lives, like That's wild. everything they wore, ate, their culture, talking well, think, to the gods, when you think. all that stuff. But there's not one hieroglyphic showing that they built these massive pyramids, and it has to make you wonder, like, okay, this is very substantial. Mm. Like, why wouldn't there be a, a story about this? Yeah, I mean, humans, we've been documenting shit too, like from the beginning of time. Like, I feel like that's something that has always been inside of humans you know wanting to be remembered you know what i mean legacy or yeah your legacy just wanting to wanting the next generation to know what you accomplished first you know like your, sure. your name live on and shit um but when yeah you, when you consider like okay so if the ancient people didn't talk to or communicate with other ancient people on the other side of the globe why did they all build the same structures you know, and like there's these weird questions. There was a, a pyramid, I think, that was found in the sea near China or Taiwan or whatever, somewhere over in the Asian area, and it had this symbol on it that looked like it was laser engraved into the side of the wall. This it was like a, a circle with a whole bunch of triangles in it or something like that, something to that extent. Um, they found the same exact symbol on some of the pyramids in like South America. Then they found the same exact symbol on some of the pyramids, like found somewhere else in the world. I forgot where it was. Right. And I'm like, that's not that's not just like coincidence. They, right. Right. They it's had not like to have been sun. communicating. Like, you can all see the sun, so that makes sense that you'd all have pictures of the sun. 
Yeah, but it's not you know, the sun, right? right? right it's a have... geometric, like, uh, in, you know, complex right. that it would be impossible for them to cut into the stone the way it is. like Without modern technology. Right. And it's just like, it, it's fascinating to me. The whole thing, um, you know, these, these, well, I think it's 2 million tons that built the pyramid, uh, the Great Pyramid. Um, fuck, you move that shit. I'm um, saying like 2 million what? tons. I meant 2 million stones. And each stone right, was like matter. 50 to 80 tons or something like that. That's or outrageous. 2 tons or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, it is outrageous because all of that stone was found 500 miles away on the other side of the Nile. And it's like, you know, you read up on it and, it, and you know, history books say, oh, yeah, the farmers made the made the pyramids. And you're like, what? Mm. And people just accept it. They're just like... Shit, what was I? I was watching um, a movie the other day, and the scene that I'm talking about had tourists that were from America in Germany. Yeah. And they were just kind of going on one of those, you know, like knowledge tours, you know, like short tours. You know, you kind of go to a library here, go see a, a, a structure, a historic building there. Yeah. And were they the, at DC or? No, they were in Germany. Oh, yeah. So the Americans were in Germany and this one scene stuck in my mind because we all learn history, you know, throughout our lives from our educational system. If you go to public school, right, usually these curriculums and everything, it's like voted on by a board. Essentially, it's the government is teaching us what they want us to know. Yeah. Um, you know, so they're in in Germany and the tour guide is explaining to them like, hey, everybody listen up. You know, this is the actual building that Hitler killed himself in as the. Russian forces were closing in on him at the end of World War II or whatever. Right. And the American is just like, whoa, whoa, I thought it was in this building and it was the American forces. And yeah. the German tour guide is just like, <laughs> you know, that <laughs> the German tour guide is just like, oh, you fucking Americans and your fake history. <laughs> you always need to be the hero. That's, That's not right. what happened. And then I'm like, you're thinking and it's like, dude, is that true? How much of our history that we've know that we've learned and know today is fabricated to for the sake of like protecting our like an American image, image. You know what I mean? Like when you think of what think of what you learned about slavery as a kid. Right. You know, it doesn't even the more you learn and look into it as an adult, bro, we have we teach our kids and through the school system just the fucking bare surface of how brutal that shit really was. There might be a reason for that though. Like outside of like what the let's say the mainstream well, protecting their fucking so they don't have PTSD, dude. It's like <laughs> no, rated, I'm saying it's like super rated R. <laughs> it'd be it'd be really hard to teach all of history, right, to a child. The child's like attention span. You know right, what I'm saying? To be, to, yeah. To be fair, I get where your point, but the whole you know like Hitler was in this building by American forces, right? That's not like a no. I know. Oh, we saying. don't have time. This is like yeah, yeah, we're yeah. full of shit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. George, can you look and see what really happened, bro? Are you able to on American Google servers? <laughs> like, who fucking really closed in on Hitler? Because to me, that is that's so strange, bro. That two countries have a totally and I'm gonna Different. be honest with you. If Germany, like that's where Hitler was from, like they've got no, they've got no um, benefit to saying it was the Russians that did it instead of Americans. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. Makes you wonder. It doesn't make me wonder, bro. It makes me laugh, and it almost it's almost embarrassing. You know, well, it's kind of, you know, it, it brings on a different uh, kind of different topic when you think like right now. So kids growing up in our world today, uh, you know, all of our information is controlled and filtered. Right. They have no access to except for older books if they went to the library. But nobody goes to the library anymore. Right. right? Um, Google filter searches. um yeah, where, where can you look to find raw information? How do you even know if it's true? Where do you verify? Since we know that, like, Google is, you know. Yeah, I mean, a lot of it is going to come down to trusting the source that you're reading it from. Yeah. You know, whether that's, you know, I mean, I think if you really, really want the source, you need to look into how you can find documents versus uh, somebody's summary of what happened. You get what I'm saying? Right. Like, if you want to go in and figure out, for example, you know, it was a few years ago, but something called Operation Northwoods. You know, like, I could read an article and tell you what that was about. Was that the CIA? That was, yeah, the CIA. Killed trying a to bunch come, of people? No, they, they were planning on um, committing, what, what's it called, a false flag? Yeah. Yeah, committing a false flag so the American people would support a war with Cuba. 
And it's like, you know, you can go and read that on the New York Times and say, eh, that's not a credible source or it is a credible source. But when you go and actually read the leaked, you know, government documents, yeah. you remove all doubt. Because you can see the documents and who they were signed by and, you know, how long they were. What's the word when documents are, like, protected? Uh, redacted or... You no, like sealed. You know what I mean? Uh -oh. And then they're unsealed. Now you can read these documents. That kind of removes all doubt. Yeah. You know, and that's really, if you want to get to the source of something, I think that's how much you've got to dig. But when it comes down to like a story and history, I mean, you're never really going to know. Reflect. You're going to get you're gonna get a perspective, you know? I literally like, considered about, buying a, 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 a an old library. set. Of, an old, yeah, library. An old set of uh, um, Americana Britannica or whatever it was, encyclopedias, hoping that... You know, maybe that old set from the '80s or whatever '70s, mm -hmm. still raw information. It's not hasn't been tainted, and just to have access to raw information that's unbiased. You know, yeah. You know, the other thing that's cool is like the the perspective of good and evil. Well, you know, when you think about wars, right? Like, think about every war that we've been in. You know, as a country, or that you've learned about. Yeah. Even something like the Civil War, right? You're from the North. You're from Jersey. I'll tack you with the North. You know, so <laughs> so like think about it. Like from 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 our perspective, yeah, the North were the good guys. You know, like oh, we're going <clears> to <throat> war to end slavery, and that's all it was about. Yeah, but the perspective from the people that were fighting the Confederacy is probably so oh, different. Of you course, know? like they're just like, hey, man, we're protecting our way of life. You know, like this is our our economy we're trying to save here. Yeah, they both or, claim the American way, right? Or something is, you know, remember 9-11. You ask any American, it was, hey, we were attacked, we retaliated, we're the good, we're fighting evil. But if you go over, you know, and you talk to anybody that was um, born and raised in fucking, what was that group? <clears throat> Al-Qaeda? Yeah. Um, you know, you ask them, and it's just like, hey, man, this Western influence is trying to overtake yep. and stop us from living our way of peace. We have to defend our way of life by attacking. You know, we're the good guys, it's Western evil. Yeah, we're the infidels. You know? it's, it's wild, man. It is. I, I had that conversation actually um, with a uh, a friend. I forgot who was who I was talking to, but and I said that I said, you know, what if it was the South that weren't the traitors? What if the North was the actual traitors? But we were taught a certain way that the North is actually the good people, and <clears throat> maybe um, maybe it wasn't that way. Maybe you know. Hmm. Well, I mean, I think inherently, like people don't want slaves. No, yeah, slavery <laughs> is just bad. Like. We're, there's not a lot of things in this world that are, you know, I feel like more, because I feel like moral and like being morally right or wrong is subjective. Right. To so much of what you know. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't know, man. I think there's, there's a, there's a few, there's a few um, topics where. Just use your fucking head. Like, having human <laughs> slaves is not good. Like, I don't know. Anyway, and I, I would probably, like, die on that hill. Like, I don't care what the reasoning is. Unless this person is like, nah, I'm, I'm with this. Like, I'm down to be a slave. I'm down they, to be yeah, a slave. They, they should never, there should be no slaves in any country, bro. You know? Well, you know, uh, based off of the, you know, that logic and just, again, just for conversation's like sake. You know, like, rape is always bad. Right. Yeah, how, how about killing? See, I'm not even going to die on that hill, bro. I think there's maybe a, a time and a place for killing. No time, no place for raping. Right. I was going to say. Like, I'm glad you didn't resist that one, bro, because we went <laughs> and stuff. You're like, well. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm just. George, I was where do you fall on rape? <laughs> where do you fall on rape? <laughs> I, I, I'm like I guess belly. I'm just weighing, uh, you know, slavery with, with murder. Like, obviously, slavery sucks. Murder sucks. There's a time to There's a time to kill. You know, and I'm thinking of, is there a time to ever have a slave? <laughs> you know, like, well, I mean, um, the prison system is kind of like that. It's right like now in Africa, there's 30 million slaves. There's a slavery that goes on today, um, just not in America. Well, so, not saying that, that it's, in it's right or wrong. I'm just, you know, stating the fact. You should say, though, whether you think it's right or wrong. I'm curious to know what you think. Um, I think I've stated this before. I, it, you know, it, it, again, it's like one of those things. If it's part of the culture, I, I don't care who's the slave and who's the owner. I mean, if that's part of the the lifestyle, like if you go out into one of these tribes and that's what they do, then that's just what they do. I don't, you know, you don't think it's wrong or right. I don't think there's a mor like a necessarily morality to it. It's just you know, there's big fish eats a little fish. Maybe. Maybe, yeah. Maybe that's my take. I mean, it sucks. 
but it's a part of global life, you know? It's a doggy dog world. Yeah. Survival of the fittest. It's like if you didn't want to be slaves, what, you should have been stronger? <laughs> I don't know, man. I feel like I'm not saying that I'm going to be an advocate and go save every slave in the world, but I, I feel like I could look. I, I, there's no way to convince me that there's a reason <laughs> to, have a to have a slave, bro. That's well, about I, if you can. The, listen, there's a lot of reasons that you would want one that would benefit you, but I could never think that that's you know, an okay way to treat a human. Well, where, like I said, <clears> with killing, like I could see some scenarios where it's warranted. Yeah. You know? Well, remember, uh, so even let's just take American history. I think only the the rich white people had slaves. The poor, broke ass white people didn't have slaves. They couldn't afford them. So, I mean, some of the slaves in America, I'm saying now, it wasn't necessarily a bad lifestyle compared to just being out wandering on your own, poor and broke. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's kind of like <laughs> what? <laughs> it's kind of like the prison system today. Like, <laughs> stop looking at me like that. <laughs> Uh, uh, where, you know, some people, they'd rather be in prison. They get three squares. You know, they're being told what to do. They have hard some structure. Some yeah, meat, shelter, you bed. know. Yeah, all yeah. that. They got health care. That's, that's better than living out on the street. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think if when you, <clears throat> but what I think you're doing right now is you're taking the, probably the small minority of slaves. Like, yeah, you know, maybe if what you're the. What small minority of slaves? I mean, like if you're the, let's say you're a slave and you're working let's on a rich plantation and you're inside and your job is to take care of kids and cook the meals all day. Mm. Like, yeah, that's better than being homeless and sleeping that's on what the I cold. Mean. Yeah. But probably not if you're like one of, I don't I, see the thing is like, I don't know, man, you know, I'm sure there's probably. Yeah, if you're getting your ass kicked yeah, every day kicked, and you're fucking getting whipped and sleeping on. in fecal matter with 50 right. other people in a barn. That sucks. Yeah. That's probably worse than being homeless. Yeah, absolutely. Because now you're you're yeah you're still in poverty. You don't get shit. and You're getting the they shit cut kicked off out of your hand and shit, bro. Just for like yeah. talking back. It's what a crazy time, man. People you know are fucked wild, up. Bro, Humans are fucked up, man. Is when you think about it, like just to see where we are now and how yeah. much we've progressed. It sounds like it's so far. Like we're so far from it, bro. Nothing. But dude, what is it? So Fifty, se maybe eighty years, a hundred years. I don't know. Well, somebody was talking to me about time. My history time. is so shit. When was slavery outlawed? Well, somebody was talking to me about time and the difference between like different periods of time uh, compared to like a ruler or a yardstick, <laughs> right, right. and then like a pencil tip is our time. Yeah, dude, it's, it's like, like nothing. Clear. You know, like segregation was still happening in like the fifties and sixties. No, it was like prevalent from seventeen seventy six to eighteen sixty five. So it's like nothing from. That's wild, bro. That's yeah. like 200 years ago. That's crazy. That's like within five generations of us. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I don't necessarily, I mean, I don't necessarily look at it like, you know, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that has happened to humans oh, for sure. in all ethnicities and cultures. That, you yeah. Know, I'm, I'm, we're kind of focused on American history, though. That's, that's the yeah. biggest blemish, I think, on American history. Oh, by far. You know what I mean? By it's, far. Yeah, You're like not you know Germans have Nazis, Americans yeah. have slavery. Like that's kind of like shh, ooh, my bad guys. Like I don't you know I it, again I I don't during those times it was more accepted. You know of what I'm course, saying? Of course, yeah. So like and again it was it was all the rich white people that had slaves. It wasn't the, the yeah, poor broke ass white even, people. Even though during those times, actually, I can't even agree that it was accepted. Yeah. You know because it. It wasn't, you know, think about it. A war started over it. So there were enough people that were against it and created an uprising to say, bro, we, this shit has to stop, you know? And it's like a lot of it now. And what's crazy is we face a lot of the same challenges now yeah. where so many of us are against, for example, censorship. Sure. Right. But we just haven't tilted that scale yet to fucking be do, something yeah, about it. do something about it. Yeah. You know, I can see that. I can definitely, definitely see that. See, like, I, you know, I have these weird takes on, I try not to, you know, just you, just base my, I guess my stance on what feels just right and wrong. Like, oh, that, because you know that whatever you're being fed media wise, it's, mm. it's, it's made to get an emotional reaction out of you. Right. Engagement. Yeah. Yeah. Like media is no longer specifically news, dude. It's no longer about giving you the facts and the accurate stories. It's about Getting how many clicks or how many views you can get yes. to sell the most ad space. 
which is unfortunate, bro, because, you know, it makes you question every news article or everything you read or see, you know? Absolutely. Like, I, I don't, even segregation, I don't necessarily believe that segregation is wrong, but when you use, when you, when you tilt it in the wrong shadow, well, then obviously it becomes wrong. And when I say I don't necessarily mean that it's wrong, uh, you know, I really believe that people flourish among their among their own a lot greater and better uh, than being forced to mix, right? Mm. I think, um, uh, you know, and, and there's always perfect examples. I think we've talked about this before, you know, like Little well, Italy, oh, I can Chinatown. Give a example right now yeah. is... If you take, there are certain things, right, that certain groups of people just do better. Right. Right. The NBA. <laughs> if you force, imagine how shitty the NBA would be if you had to have an equal number of black people, Asian people, Irish people. Like, Right. It gets ridiculous. <laughs> that league would be so shit to watch, bro. Like, I'm down with just segregate them. Let's let if all the best teams are black, let's let them, you know, just flourish, bro. Yeah. I want to watch the best people in the world play basketball. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And that, that that's exactly what I mean. Like for I, I think our, one of our previous episodes uh was it our last one or the one before that we were talking about like homogenization and homogenized. Like, everybody everybody's trying to be the same. Let's just uh let's celebrate our differences. Like who cares if you I don't mean segregated out of hate. <laughs> Yo, have you ever seen that? <laughs> George, please find this little cartoon video that's called Celebrate Our Differences song. Yo, if you've never seen this, bro, you're going to laugh your ass off. The fact the fact that this was ever, like, released and popular. Show me so I can see a little. Yeah, yeah, we got volume. No. Max your headphones out so we can hear it. What is that? Yo, listen to this shit, dude. Oh, wait, I think oh, I've yeah. seen this. And then they go to <laughs> Africa. <laughs> This shit, you're showing this to the audience, right? <laughs> Bro, this shit is crazy. See, now today that wouldn't be accepted. The... Oh, no fucking way. <laughs> why? I don't understand why. Well, <laughs> Dude, don't this video. Why. No. Uga Booga, they're saying. <laughs> is that what they're saying? Uga Booga, this is terrible, bro. <laughs> like, it's fucking hilarious, but it's so terrible. And it's like, it's weird to think. It's like, all right. I mean, you're right. That's like Kanye I, listen, saying all the Jews. Put it this way. Put it this way. I actually agree with you. Yeah. And the fact that I'm I'm questioning why is that not accepted today? Like it's stereotypical, but, but it's, it's not. It's not like there's no ill. No, it's, there's no ill intent. Like I don't look at those little cartoon African warriors and think, oh, Africans are spear throwers. I say, oh, that's that's paying homage to fucking like African warriors in these tribes. The the Chinese That's ones a stretch, was a little, man. The Chinese <laughs> ones was a little weird. They're like ching chong ching chong ching. But no, I mean when you think about it, like um I don't know. It, to me, that's no different than seeing like a like a Native American, you know, with their feather hats and their you know the face paint, just like paying homage to their culture. Yeah, no, yeah. I agree. I, I'm doing a rain yeah. dance or some shit, opening a casino. Yeah, know, whatever. Doing what they do. Doing what they do, bro. We're so sensitive nowadays. It's like. You can't say anything. Yeah. You know what's what's weird, man, is it's always the motherfuckers that, like, aren't part of that culture speaking up for it, you know? Like, I love that. I watched this video a couple times, dude, on TikTok, and it's it's a white dude dressed in, like, a mariachi uniform. Yeah. He's walking around, like, L.A. or New York. Do you New find York. this offensive? Do you find this offensive? And, and it's all these fucking, you know, like, ladies with pink hair and, you know, I don't know. They're just like, oh, my God, it's cultural appropriation. You know, then it's a dude that, like, you know, has an I'm pregnant T-shirt on, and he's just like, you can't dress like that. That's offensive. That's offensive. offensive. Bro, and then he wears that same outfit to Mexico. Yeah, and, and you're like, like, wow, You find awesome. me offensive, you're like, no, I say I love the outfit. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. You know, like, they're just fucking happy that you're, you know, like, fucking how part of their culture. Talk. Some of them, dude. Some of them probably speak like you and I. I don't know. I'm just talking about this one specific guy in the video. Yeah. No, man, I love the outfit. I don't think Mexicans are offended by anything, though. <laughs> yeah, facts, bro. <laughs> Unless you call them something other than Mexican. True. Mm. Oh, true. You call a Mexican a Puerto Rican, bro, they're not going to be happy. Or like a Guatemalan a Mexican. True, 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 true. <laughs> but, you know, so it's funny. It's like, you know, all of... And it's all fucking the same nonsense virtue signaling, you know, like trying to score some social justice brownie points. I don't like, who it. are you to say... 
that Mexicans are offended. You're not even fucking Mexican. Who are you? How do you speak for an entire country? To say I, don't, that's offensive? I don't. Yeah, I, I I don't get it. I really don't get it. I love it's it too. Irritating. Sometimes I'll, I'll. One of my favorite things to do, bro, when I'm scrolling TikTok is like troll in the comments. You know what I mean? Of course. Like I go against. It's so obvious that it's a troll, but some people don't see it. You know, like I'll see a video of a a chick and she's crying about how she went through her boyfriend's phone and caught him cheating on her. You know, they have two kids. He'd been cheating on her for years. Yeah. And I'll go in the comments and be like, King, you deserve better. Good thing you deserve this. You dodged this red flag. Can't believe she went through your phone. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and then I'll get like a tag on this room. Like, how could you say that? He cheated. He's, I'm like, these fucking dumb bitches don't know what's going on. <laughs> um, but one of you know, like I see these videos and it'll be like a white girl with braids and then you go in the comments and it's all these fucking other white people telling her she can't wear braids because it's cultural appropriation. Shut the fuck Shut up. Shut the fuck up, bro. That's Shut exactly the what fuck I'm saying, up. dude. Hey, how about Beyonce with her hair fucking straight and blonde? Is that cultural appropriation? Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You think only white people do it? It's always only white people? Stop it. Shut right. the fuck so up. There's plenty of black people nowadays that still have dads and shit. Like that's not cultural appropriation. <laughs> too far, too far. Bad joke. But play the little but don't sound on that, bro. But there's like a laughing button. You know the, the applause. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes I think about use we should use those effects that sometimes I'm like, eh, it's too gimmicky. Yeah. I've heard podcasts you know, that you use them. When Jay says a joke next time, bro, hit the cricket button. <laughs> hey, my, my sense of humor is very subtle. Uh, I mean, well it's not subtle, well, but one thing I appreciate about your sense of humor, bro, is not it's it's a bit subpar, but it's similar to mine. It's <laughs> no, but Fuck. most of the shit. <laughs> no, I'm he kidding. A I'm kidding. You when he <laughs> you. Like, yeah, no, he's the king of that. <laughs> the first time I ever like hung out with Jay, he's like, it was like winter, right? It's freezing outside. He goes, "What cologne is that?" And I tell him, he goes. I bet that'd be real good in the summer. I'm like, what the fuck, bro? Like, dude, I, I was so insecure that I never wore that cologne again. <laughs> I was crushed. I didn't even know how to take that. No, but um, like when you make jokes. You're telling me how to make jokes? No, no, no I'm, I'm, I'm telling you about when you make jokes, which oh. I like, is it's to make yourself laugh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like when I tell a joke, dude, there's a lot of my jokes, where, maybe 70% where I'm the only one that thinks it's funny. But yeah. I still think it's funny, you know, like if nobody else thinks it's funny, it doesn't change how I feel about it. Right. But well, you know what? It's a, such a reflection of like where where your mind's at. So like yeah. when you say something that's hilarious because you do often, you know, somebody has to sit there and think and put themselves in your head. <laughs> and once they do, they're like, ah, you know, they fucking explode. Um, Bro, like that comment when, she, when Judy just put, like it took me one second to realize what you were talking about. You're like, oh, you don't like it in the can? And I died. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I got that from my my dad. He was so witty. He he could yes, he I could am. literally make a stranger at a bar who who decided to talk to him for whatever reason either die laughing or crying like because he's punch in, him in the face. And he was <laughs> the kind of guy that you know that would just he would keep going like even if you're crying he would just he would just keep saying you know whatever. Like crying of sadness or laughing? Yes, because uh, like you know, you can either take what he's saying as an insult, or like, man, this guy's fucked up. Like he's he's <laughs> oh, hilarious. <man. laughs> it's kind of like all the shit that you say. Like you know, you can oh, whoa, whoa. you well, can take make, a, a lot of what you say. Cry. Yeah, hard. right. As uh, either funny or insulting. Like <laughs> so if you much have thin of the, skin. Yeah, I have thin skin. Mm-mm. Oh, ain't nothing about me thin, bro. Right, exactly. Me either. <laughs> I won't even talk about what I said when you walked in. <laughs> I know, this guy's talking about my muffin top. <laughs> He's like, bro, I'm you look like that. Like, is this the heaviest you've ever been? <laughs> like, it's a sweater. It's a sweater. <laughs> Who am I to make fat jokes? It's right? all like my relaxed muscle. Or am I the expert? Like, <laughs> if anybody's going to make a good fat joke, it should be me. Oh, man. Relaxed muscle. You're <laughs> <laughs> muscle. It's just, just laying there waiting to be activated. Yeah. Yeah, so the but speaking of, you know, comedy and making yourself laugh, not a phrase that irritates me a lot is when people say, Oh, that's not even funny. It's like, bitch, to you. Like, who are you to determine what is and what isn't funny? Oh, it's all man. subjective, you know what I mean? 
Yeah, of course. I got or, into like some kind of like tiff beef on Facebook. One of my um older, one of my old friends from Jersey, this chick, she got really offended by something I said. I forgot what I was talking about. Chick. Yeah, she goes, "That's not even funny." You're, you know, this and that. Da 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 da. I'm like, I'm not gonna explain myself. I just deleted it. I, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, <laughs> but also, people have this this terrible fucking habit right now. For wanting to fight you and have shit removed or be canceled where it's like, dude, if you don't think it's funny, just keep it fucking moving. You know what I mean? If something offends you, don't watch it. Don't read it. Don't listen to it. Like what? Let me flag it on Facebook. Yeah, dude. Like reporting it. So because you don't enjoy it, you don't think anybody else has the right to enjoy it. Right. It's such a, an annoying fucking turn that this country's taken lately, dude. I don't even think it's the country. I think it's the whole world. Th- now think about that. Like if we can't, if, if everybody had a say in what we could make fun of. We, what could we make fun of? Nothing. Bro, it's literally Nazi Germany when that happens. Like, like we can't even say retard anymore. Who, what do you mean we can't? I say that all the time. Yeah, you shouldn't. Why? Because a retard will get offended. Invented? <laughs> offended. Speaking of retards. <laughs> Speaking of retards. <laughs> it's just offended. weird. You know, it's like, yeah, like, bro, it offends some people. Everything you say offends some people. Right. Like, there are recovering alcoholics. Am I, am I supposed to just not ever drink because it could trigger someone? Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a wild one. Who would, co- who would comedians, like, talk about if you can't poke fun at people? You can't make – you definitely can't make fun of gay people. Yeah, like, that's like – you, you know, you're totally – It's like you, even if it has nothing to do with their sexuality, you can't even call a gay person fat or it's, like, homophobic. Right. It's not it's because they're gay. Were those, uh, we had those two comedians on our show though that were like, they were like, oh, we don't curse or ever make fun of people in our comedy. And I'm we're like, like, how so would you fuck make him and fuck you too? <laughs> so I'm like, so like, give me like, give me a little bit of your bit. And he's just like, all right. So you ever like have a nice ham? And I'm like, dude, I'm already done with this shit. Like, <laughs> you ever have a nice <laughs> yeah. ham? I'm like, where's this going? How's this gonna make me laugh? And then he goes on for like five minutes, and the punchline is just so shit, bro. So sh- I'm like, yo, you know what I like to do is shut that ham up your fat ass, bro, because that was the worst joke I've ever heard. <laughs> and I've already, like, m- like I'm happier now that I made my joke than 10 minutes of your fucking ham joke. In the service, I had a friend named, um, well, I won't even n- name him. Anyway, his name's Mark. But, um, I mean, he... he <laughs> Mark Jefferson of St. Louis. <laughs> <laughs> he sucked a lot of cock, and he... He was pretty open about it, whatever. At the time, it was like, I think... That's the, like, don't ask, don't tell them yeah. military days, bro. They kick right. your ass out. I think he eventually got kicked out because yeah, of it. Bro. But anyway... Like, yo, you can be gay. You just can't go advertising in the military I didn't care in that, those days. I didn't care he was gay. We'd, you know, we would hang out. He was funny as shit, whatever. That was an uh, interesting rule. We would go to the time. clubs, and obviously, girls are always attracted to the gay guys. You know, they're all over yeah, them, whatever. They wear the same clothes and shit. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I'd walk over, and I'm like, listen, ladies, you don't want to talk to this guy he has like semen all under his tongue and whatever, and he would never ever get offended. And that's why we got along. He knew exactly, right, right, right. and I would say that in front of other people. And yeah, he just, you know, he was like, "That's O'Leary." So I don't know. You gotta have thick skin to hang out with either you or you or me. You know what I mean? That's my story. I had well, a lot of gay friends. Yeah. Thanks for coming to my TED talk. Yeah, do you think it's crazy that you can be canceled as a comedian for saying a joke? I think that's ridiculous. I think it's I, the craziest thing ever when I hear yeah. like comedians that get in trouble socially for saying a joke about something. That's hey, I, I'll enough. totally agree. Andrew Dice Clay, like you know, one of the funniest guys on the planet. Well, ever. no, yeah, I, I think he, I think he's okay. You know, whatever. But in all honesty, I think it's a little vulgar and like whatever. I yeah, but that's him. That's who. Well, he hold on, is. hold on. No, but right. You just don't listen to it. If right. You I just don't it. listen to it. You're I, not I, like he should stop. If like, somebody <laughs> asked me, oh, you know, who's your top comedian? I would never mention his name. I just think that he's just very vulgar. Or, but to some people, that shock comedy sort of like uh, what Anthony, was that movie with what's um, that dude's name? Anthony like Jesterson or you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, he's, he's like, dark. Yeah, it's I, like, actually, I think that's creative. So. I'm Chisel Nick or something. Chisel, yeah, something something with a Nick at the end. Um, it's not my cup of tea. I feel like when you're going that hard, you're not really going for laughs. You're going for shock factor. It feels cheap right. to me. It's like when, when I see a female comedian and they immediately go up and start trying to like talk about their pussy and shit, and they're just like, oh, yeah, you know, I love suck. I'm like, all right, you're just going for these cheap little horny laughs. Right. You're not really fucking like skilled up There's there. There's no th- right, 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 right. There's right. no depth to like your jokes. But anyways. What was that uh, movie with the, the all the food that could talk? Um, sausage fest was it something sausage like that. Fest? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was like, kind of like kind of graphic and shit. Yes, yeah. That's what I I, I find that to be the epitome of just kind of like shock 
like comedy, like where that it's just funny. over, like, it, bro, <laughs> it was over the top. Hot dog fucking the buns, bro. That was great, dude. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like you know, <laughs> you had like the the cinnamon stick, fucking the donuts, dude, <laughs> the, the douche, yeah. and like all that oh, stuff. What? Wasn't there a douche bag in that movie? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. Yeah, no, I don't like that cancel culture. I was reading some um, some shit the other day, dude. Like a college football player was in all kinds of heat because they had a video of him. Um, like a few years prior, bro, like rapping along to a song and saying the word nigga. And it's like, dude, he's just like fucking rapping the lyrics, bro. And like they wanted him canceled, bro. But I've seen a lot of black people defending him in the comments. You know what I mean? It's like, dude, how are you going to like cancel this man and try to end his career for saying a word yeah. that black rappers are saying so all of these fucking white people can go and buy the records and keep them rich? Yeah, but it's you know, all you're gonna fucking penalize stupid. him for singing along to the lyrics. It was crazy, man. It's all stupid it's so nonsense. Crazy, dude. That's like the same. Uh, college QB. Yeah, yeah. It's Marcus silly, bro. Stokes. What's his name? Marcus Stokes. Marcus Stokes. Is that, you know, am I accurate 20, with that story? 23rd high school QB in the nation. Think about that, bro. Yeah. Like these fucking weirdos would try to. This dude has a flourishing career. He's probably going to be a, a millionaire, be able to take care of his family for a yeah. couple of generations. You know what I mean? And people would take that away from him for reciting <laughs> lyrics, bro, to a song, to a song that he probably streamed or bought that is contributing to a black person getting rich somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Yes, it's actually dude, it's, aggravating it's, it's, to think yeah, about. <laughs> it's it's like, so aggravating to think about. It it's like ask somebody. backwards. <laughs> I saw an interview with Lil Wayne today. You know who Lil Wayne is? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can pull this up. Lil Wayne is asked about Lil Black Wayne Lives is? Matter. Yeah, he was like, interview. I don't support it. No, he goes, he's like, you know what, man? And she's <laughs> just like, you know, Black Lives Matter. He goes, what the fuck does that mean? He goes, cool. I don't even get involved in none of that. Yeah, Black Lives Matter. I mean, what the fuck? He's like, you're he talking was... to a young, black, rich man. Fucking, if that's not a clue that Black Lives Matter in this country, like, shit, my life matters. <laughs> was like, also, worst Lil Wayne impression ever, bro. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty bad, bad, but... <laughs> Sounded more like Nate Diaz. <laughs> wasn't, uh, wasn't Lil Wayne the one that was gonna die and then he was picked up when he was a kid by a white cop and all these black cops like I think a white guy saved him oh yeah. really yeah and so he was I he, didn't know that at all he busted into the house and uh, apparently there was something going on or whatever and he was dying and uh, there's like two black cops that walked over his well, body just kicked him to the side and then a white cop came in like picked him up and took him and that's how he survived so every really time, every time he's on like TikTok or anything and somebody says something about racism he's like I don't see color because I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for a white guy yeah well it's just like it's that that phrase like I don't see color fucks with me because like it's all right to see color like yeah, it's all it, right to see color. It just like at the end of the day it doesn't affect how you treat people. You know right. what I mean? Like I would be silly to be like George is not white. We're the same. You know what I mean? Like we we there's different complexion between the three of us actually. Or you know people that are like I don't see color is such a cop out. It makes me feel like you are racist if you say I don't see color. I'm like, yeah, that's all liberal about, jargon yeah. bullshit. Like using these buzzwords and shit. <laughs> and I'm not a, like a hippie saying oh celebrate our differences. Nah, like bro, just. We just look different. It's like I'm not gonna treat you different because of it, you know. This, uh, oh, I might, bro. Like, yeah. Like if I had to, if I had to pick you or somebody like Brandon Ramos for a basketball game, I'm picking him first. Oh, that'd be a big mistake. I'm nasty. You got. You still get up there? <laughs> <laughs> Can you still dunk? My mind. My mind works faster than my feet, but yeah, whatever. Sure. <laughs> this kid from Florida is nuts. He said he was in his car listening to a rap song, rapping with his friends about the lyrics, and then the next day the University of Florida dropped his college rap. I hate Crazy, everybody. Bro. I hate everybody. That's so That's tilting. Wild to me. I hate people. I hate culture. Actually, I love culture, but I hate where our country's going. It bother it triggers me. I feel like a bitch because I'm getting all triggered over it. That's why I can't watch the news. <clears throat> Yo, but dude, I don't ever watch the news. It's so... And I almost, bro, I, I want to smack the shit at, out of people. Like, I almost pity. And, yeah, like, I laugh at people that do watch the news. Yeah. Like, if, if I know somebody sits there and watches, like, the local news or CNN or Fox, like, they're just tuned in and watching, I'm like, bro, fuck's wrong with you? Like, you're so out of touch right now. But these fucking stupid... uh networks are infiltrating the smart people now too man because that's i'm seeing more news ads on my youtube feed and shit I'm like get the fuck out of here they got me paying for all this ad free shit just so i don't have to see the same fucking don't drink and drive ad in rhode island nine times a day yeah that that's might be right. specific to me the ripple effect you guys see that ad no. Yeah, it's definitely specific to me. <laughs> <laughs> they must—they're looking at my credit card fucking statements. They're like, "All right, 
Let's hit them with the don't drink and drive ad this weekend. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what's going on in this country anymore, man. How about what's happening in Romania? What's Big boy on? Andrew Tate got arrested. Yeah, what a... What's going on with that? He, how, he, he how did about say how he got arrested, bro? Do you know how and why he got arrested? For sex. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's, let's, yes, uh, that's how they found out where he was. But, bro, he's up, he's on fucking sex line. Sex trafficking or something? No, he's online arguing with this. Who's the little climate control bridge? Gretel? Uh, Hansel and Gretel? Thunberg. Yeah, Thunberg. we all know what we're talking about. The, you know, she, she had a nice fucking snapback. Snap <laughs> little, clap, little clap back, what? The yeah, dick thing? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she, but you know, anyway, she got him. She should be punched but anyways, in the face. But bro, he's, yeah, she could definitely be hog slapped. Um, so anyways, fucking, you know, they're going back and forth. Hog and then he, um, <laughs> yeah. which first of all, the fact that you're getting, you know, you're giving her a reaction is like, bro, you're so above that. You know what I mean? Like, come on, you're supposed to be top G. Like, why is this fucking I mean, listen, little... if you tweet Greta Thunder, whatever, Bird, you're going to, I mean, he wants that reaction. No, I know, but he shouldn't even, like, went down that road. You know what I mean? She, like, gave the, she, so. she did give the typical response to, like, oh, small dick energy. Shut right. the fuck up. Which is funny because it's like now all of a sudden the left is on board with body shaming, but you call Lizzo fat and you're crucified. Good point. Like, you know what I mean? It's Good like, point. Oh, body shaming is cool if you're a straight man. Right. Um, Anyways, back to the moral of the story. So he, he responds with a video, bro. Mm. And in the video, he's just talking about fucking like whatever, whatever, pizza. And he shows a pizza box. And because he showed that pizza box, it had the pizza restaurant's logo on the box, which is exclusive to like a little city in Romania. Right. And they knew where he was and they picked him up on. So I read a couple of things. I read that it was like sex trafficking charges. But then I realized, you know, sex trafficking something like he's not he hasn't been charged yet with it. I know that. Right. But the wording was really like vague because of course. the real like the reality of again, this is just based on fucking like reading little articles here and there is that apparently he has like a ring of um, cam like cameras. Yeah, like cam girls in subjecting them to do certain things, you know, like they they were particular about not using words like kidnapping or forcing them to do things but it was like subjecting and influencing them to do certain shit right which you know you know when the wording is vague because yeah. they can't really tell you there's something wrong they're right. trying to make it stick that's what it seemed like um but in any case bro sometimes i like to look at things for the most obvious way the guy is fucking pretty close to a billionaire you know for the in in what's his name George? George? hold on in I think if you ask the average person, right, if you're going to ask the average person, he's a handsome dude. You know, he's tall. He's in shape. He's got a symmetrical face. He's athletic. Mm. Probably not hard for him to bag bitches. Of course not. So, like, in, what world, yeah, like, in what world does he really have to, like, force girls to come and do anything? He doesn't. You know what I mean? So that's why when I look at this, I, I try to not just stick to it right away. And granted, yeah. I might be a bit biased because... I like a lot of what he says. If he's human, tra if he's really kidnapping and having sex slaves, well, I think I think he's more, a piece of shit. I think it was more about age. I think was, he runs a webcam operation and then he hired girls and I don't think he ID'd you, said girls. Where, what where was, was that coming from, bro? That's what I read from the where? article. I'll pull pull some. What is he that. worth? But hold on. Why, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't have to ID them. If they're underage, it's legal. You know what I mean? That That's... if. You, that's a risk you're going to take, though, but it's not illegal. Like, like, what are you saying right now? No, you don't have to ID. Bro, if you go pick up a girl at the bar and you take her home, do you ID her? No, you no. have to ID her to employ her as a webcam girl in your company. Oh, if you're employed. Wait, hold on, wait, hold on, wait. wait. If you go to okay, the bar and pick up a girl, you're still responsible. And that's what I said. Okay. That's a risk you're taking. But do you ever ID them? Do you say, hey, let me see your ID? Oh, fuck no. That's what I'm saying. No, if you're in a bar, Especially I just assume, bar, you're... I assume yeah, fuck that. Yeah. If I get bagged, I'm suing the bar at that point. But I don't have to worry about that shit anyway. I'm just thinking. Bro, they took the I'm best thinking, picture of I mean, him ever. And it, That's like an album cover. He actually said it. He's like, you know, this is pretty orchestrated. He knew that he was going to get arrested at some point. Mm -hmm. And then he also predicted he's predicting his own death, right? Um, I mean, when you can, when you think about the world uh, view, again, when you look at Elon, you look at Kanye, of course they're going to go after Tate. You know, to yeah, me, it's all the same that, Anybody shit. that speaks up against, yes. you know, the fucking, the mighty elite. It's, yes. I hate when I use terms like that because you sound so like conspiracy, but it's, we all know who we're talking about. You know, the, the powers that be, bro, the money, the up and, you know, the fucking people in charge. That's right. The, the, the reason that Epstein hung himself, you know what I mean? Yeah, he's not dead. I don't believe he's dead. I think he's dead, but I mean, he was killed. So I don't think, I don't think billionaires die, man. I think billionaires, they're just so wealthy. They find way. they don't have to yeah. die. 
you think um, Steve Jobs is still alive? Or who's the other one, McAfee? Uh, Steve Jobs, that might be a little different story because I think he was with the, you know, he, he went. Bro, he owned, he was fucking CEO for Apple. Like, that's as left as you can get tech in California. Yeah. Like in the valley, bro. It doesn't but I mean, he wasn't, well, he died of natural, right? Didn't he? Pancreatic cancer, I believe. Or something like that. Yeah. Whereas, like, Epstein was facing charges. He's doing, he's, they're not going to put somebody like Epstein in jail. No, they killed that motherfucker, bro, because <clears throat> of the dirt he has on everybody else, bro. Are you crazy? Sure, sure. He knew way too much to go to fucking take any stand ever, bro. He had a list of like 300 plus <sighs> names that had. You know. Who do you think's on that list? Everybody's Everybody. on that list. And that's why Everybody, they won't right, bro. And that's why they won't release it, right? Everybody. Hillary. Yeah. Bill. They released, they released part of different The flight logs. Fucking, bro. Yeah. Everybody. Tom Hanks. Donald Trump. Will Ferrell. Will, everybody's on that fucking list, Prince bro. Andrew. Everybody, bro. Everybody. Isn't it sickening? It's like, sickening, bro. It's like, man. I mean, I, that just shit. They might kill us for talking about it right now. But, and, and, you know, it just goes to show, you know, that... I don't know. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> yeah. It's like almost him. as scary as, you know, a few years ago, man, where, you know, like Kanye, for example, <coughs> a lot of people, when you call somebody crazy, right? Yeah. It is the easiest way to try to silence them. Yeah. Discredit because you get people to discredit and dismiss what they're saying. Yeah. But if you sit down and yeah, you're Kanye, he does some out there shit, but you know what I mean? Like. Every fucking, everybody has a little craziness to him. You know, everybody, every artist specifically, you know, they're, they're a little loose, man. But when you really sit back and listen to his interviews and listen to what he says, man, it's all coming from a place of good, you know. And I can see where his delivery might be, be shit. And he's not the most um, educated person. Right. So his ability to articulate what he's trying to say might not come out as smooth as somebody like a fucking Barack Obama. Right. But, if you look at the message, man, it all makes sense. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of what he says makes sense. So to take a guy like that and forcefully take him out of his home and, you know, take him to a fucking psych ward and medicate him against right. his will, dude, that's really scary that they can even do that. You know what I mean? Like, bro, yeah, you're making do whatever too much they want. noise. You're talking too much. We're going to fucking shut you up if we have to force you to shut up. Yeah. I mean, think about this. He... You know, it's not about what he said. It's about how he was saying it. And, and you know, you got to take everything in context. I think him going on on you know live or whatever he was on that interview and saying you know Alex yeah I, or Alex Jones saying yeah I like Hitler and all that stuff that was his fuck you to the uh, you know all the record execs all the people running the show because they're all Jewish it wasn't it wasn't he might not really necessarily agree with Hitler and stuff like that but that was his way of saying fuck you you gotta I, try you're to not going to shut me yeah, yeah fuck off yeah that's exactly what it was. And I don't necessarily disagree uh, with him as far as because um, all the record execs are all Jewish. That's what he meant. You right, know, it's right. not about what, what he was saying. It's about what he meant. They yeah. all are Jewish. Dave, Dave, uh, Dave Chappelle had a funny little skit about it. You know, and he talks about how all through his career, you know, he's made fun of black people. He's made fun of white people. He's yeah. made fun of all these people. But everybody tries to avoid making fun of the Jewish people. You know, that's usually like... The shit that fucks you up. <laughs> what's wrong with making fun of Jewish people? I'm not Those are God's go there, people right there. I don't want to get canceled. I don't know what's going on. I, I find it pretty I amazing that the, the the Jews are part of... Uh, now, this is going, you know, Can kind you of say side the Jews? A couple of years ago, somebody gave me shit for using that term, the Jews. Why? Is it like is it a slander now? Is it like... I don't know. They were just like, oh, that term is really offensive. I'm like, you're not even Jewish. Like, what the fuck are you talking about, bro? <laughs> I find it pretty pretty interesting You're though like Scottish. that right yeah <laughs> that the the Jewish people are part of what's supposedly God's people right and typically generally speaking from my forty three years they're successful people they were blessed by yeah. God and I don't I don't really know a community of poor Jewish people right they're usually lawyers they're flourishing business on you know like I don't know strong culture strong background yeah absolutely why is that you know you it makes you wonder. It's a lot like Asian cultures. They stick they, together. They stick together and they help. They each segregate. Other they segregate sure. themselves. <laughs> Interesting. I find it pretty, pretty, uh, yeah, fascinating. Like, oh, okay, man. Maybe that book Jesus, over there. I don't know any poor Jewish people. I don't. They're all successful. They're all successful. They're all very well off, coming from money. And that was like, a, you know, if you go into like biblical history, that was a, a promise given to them, 
you know, through. Really? Yeah. Like way back when saying that, hey, look, you guys are going to be the people. I don't know. Maybe are. that's why Arabs hate them. They're jealous. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's the title. Oh, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> but, so, yeah, from what I read, too, they still have Andrew Tate. I read that they, um, it was supposed to be a 24-hour hold, and then it got bumped up to 30 days. So he can appeal it, but right. that's, uh, that should be fun to talk about for a little while. If you and I were on Andrew Tate's level or Kanye or Elon or anybody, we couldn't be talking like the way we talk. They would shut us down. They'd probably kill us. Um, There's no way. I don't know, man, because Joe Rogan has a pretty big following, and he's, he says some you know inappropriate jokes and makes comments like that. You know what? He doesn't harp on it like Tate does. Tate, that's his like platform. He well, I think here's the thing: is I think Tate, Tate says it in a fuck you way, but also in a very um, what's the word I'm looking for? A very intentional. Yes. Yeah, like a very intentional, but also educated way. You know, like there's nothing that he's ever said where he's backpedaled on or right. not been able to I- explain and, and articulate why he feels that way. Right. You know? I, I like Which the I interview like that, where he, him and Pierce Morgan are first going. First or second one? Um, I'm not even sure. So the first one was kind of shit was because it toxic Pierce, masculinity. And, Pierce was just in, like continuously interrupting him. Yeah. And, you know, like trying to twist his words. And it wasn't even like an interview. It was like a, it was like a botched interrogation. To where he was like going for a mic drop moment that never happened. Exactly. And, and here's and one of the tricks that Pierce Morgan does is he was asking Tate very specific questions like, where is that line where it becomes toxic masculinity? And, 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 and Tate, being as smart as he is, he realized if I answer this question. It's like a got you question. Well, yeah. If I answer this question, then I am agreeing that toxic masculinity even exists. Like it's, you know, uh, I'm, I'm saying right. – that, you know, yeah, so I his agree response that it, will be, I don't think masculinity is toxic. Right, right. exactly. And, I, and, I, and that that's what I appreciate about Andrew Tate. You know, like he he actually, um, he thinks before he, he speaks. He's Yeah, a lot of people don't do that. You know what's cool, too, is I was watching some net, Netflix shit the other day, and there was a quote from this movie. What's that movie on Netflix right now? It's popular. It's called, like, The Onion, Onion Layer or some weird shit. What? The Onion House. I don't know, George. It, if you type Onion Netflix, it'll probably be the first thing. But the quote from the movie, you know, because it's this glass fuck, the Glass Onion, yeah, is um, there's a scene in the movie where this bitch is just like yapping about like, oh, people hate me because I speak truth. You know, I'm just, I just speak the truth. I just speak facts. And this detective is just like, you know, it's a dangerous thing to confuse speaking without thinking as speaking truth. And I oh, think, absolutely. And I think, man, I was just like, dude, that's a dope quote because a lot of people think that a lot of people have no filter and they'll just say some stupid shit or say something that, you know, they feel is is right. They don't think and they assume that because they, they said it without planning their response that it's truth. Right. Like just because you don't think about it doesn't mean it's true. Your instinct isn't true. You know, it's just your instinct. You know, it's your knee jerk, the, just your, your unfiltered thought. Right. You know. Hell, that goes back to, uh, you know, when we were talking about one of our really old episodes with uh, Two Stupid Dogs, we were talking about um, Kaepernick, you know, and I, you know, pretty much I, I was like, you know what, the guy has a message. It's just that his delivery, I think, my opinion, sucked, you know, that whole thing. And I, I think that applies to a lot of exactly what you're saying. You could ha- you could you could be speaking the truth, but I don't think it's the same. Th- well, we're not talking about the same thing. I don't disagree with what you're saying about Kaepernick's message and the way he delivered it, um, but I don't. I don't think they equate. Oh, I'm sorry. Expound. What were you like? Ooh, good word. Um, so Kaepernick wasn't just doing something unfiltered and incorrect that he thought was the truth. In, oh, in you weren't talking of, about delivery. You were talking about just right, right. unfiltered, like, just because you think of it doesn't mean it's doesn't true. Doesn't mean it's right. truth. Like, yeah, like, you're, you're speaking without thinking about it first doesn't right. mean, you know, like, you only speak the truths and people right. don't like you because of it. Yeah, it's like, right. no. You know, like, you don't have haters because you speak the truth. People don't like you because you're an idiot. You know? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where okay. with, you know, with Kaepernick, obviously, it was, um, you know, first of all, I, I don't even know if if what he was saying had a truth to it you know like to say that there's a huge problem with police brutality as a whole 
when you think of how many fucking police there are and how many instances and interactions they have with the public. Yeah. And then out of those, all those interactions, how many turn into something physical. And then of those things that are physical, how many are the police overly physical with no repercussion is probably such a f- fraction of them. Right. You know, so for him to kind of try to try to use his platform and and give us this fantasy where that's how all police are all the time, most of the time even, you know, was kind of weird. But on top of that, his delivery was... I actually don't have a problem with the delivery. Yeah, know? I know. Be- yeah, we, we, yeah, we talked about that. You know, because it got, it got the attention that he was trying to get. I think there was more of a problem with the message than the delivery, to be honest with you. Really? Yeah, because again, I don't... I've, you know, like, I've had many, 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 many interactions with police. You know what I mean? Yeah. And... And I feel like if you ask anybody that has ever interacted with them, if you fucking take every person that's ever interacted with police, yeah, more than 95% of them are going to be like, yeah, bro, you told me to do this. I did it. I left. You know, he asked me for this. I gave him the paperwork. He gave me a ticket. I left. You know, yeah. and then you talk about all of the interactions that turned physical where maybe they had to arrest you. They probably did it by the books and wasn't anything, you know, excessive. Yeah. You know, it's a small fraction of those interactions that are ex- because some people are just shitty people. Like well, you, that shitty cop mm-hmm. would have been a shitty carpenter or a shitty plumber. He's just a shitty person. Right. You know, so he's the kind of guy that's going to get into a fight and just be a dick at the bar too. You know, he just happened to be in that Absolutely. job at that time. That doesn't represent all of the police as a whole, you know, or the industry as a whole. Here's my problem with police officers. And I'm, I'm pro law enforcement, but I am obviously anti bad policing. Um, and what happens is, is that, Police officers, a majority of them, um, from my own experience to, you know, uh, interacting with them, um, they bank on your ignorance and that's where they cross the line. That's where they, they bank on your ignorance and then totally, uh, you know, try to exert this authority and power that they don't really have, but because you don't know that you don't know your rights, you you don't don't know know your rights and stuff like that. They just totally take advantage of that. Um, a a lot of the stuff when they pull people over, they're like, Hey, this is just officer safety. I'm going to put you in handcuffs. Like, fuck you, man. You're not not putting me me in handcuffs until I've (laughs) broken a law and you're formally charging me with something. Get the fuck out of my face, dude. But that's them just banking on the fact that, you know, okay, yes, sir. You know, right, right, right. Um, and, and I don't know what's worse. Uh, you know, just, blindly trusting police officers to, you know, do the right thing and be like, okay, here, put me in handcuffs. Is that worse versus, you know, the other extreme? Those where, guys that, like, audit them and try to catch them fucking up. And Well, that, but I, I, what I'm saying is that, like, we don't necessarily want a society where everybody is, you know, uncontrollable, too. Because then no, there's no point in policing. Order. Yeah, you need law and order, or it'd be chaos. And well, you know what happens there's that no, fine line. You know what happens when you have no law and order? Everybody bands together, and somebody's going to be slaves again. Yeah, probably. You know? You're right. Like, when you turn it into just pure fucking primitive chaos, it's going to be madness, and people you know are going to create their own law and order. Nowadays, everybody has a, a, a camera on, the, on their body, on their persons, so they can record their police interactions, and that's, that's pushing... You know, law enforcement several steps backwards. Like, fuck, well, we see, need to reevaluate how we good, interact though. with the public. That's good. It is that, good. That should. It, well, it's good and it's a, bad. No, if, I don't think there's anything bad with it because as a police officer, man, yeah, you should. If if you're worried about a camera, bro, it's because you're doing something not by the books. It's because you're doing something you shouldn't be, bro. Well, I, I agree with you, but I, here's a perspective that I, I want to throw out there. So. Now I remember okay in nine in the ni- late nineties early two thousands, um, the whole law enforcement thing was to when you're on scene you want to take control of the situation because you're the authority there and mm-hmm. you know people are leaning on you and you know that kind of thing, but taking control of the situation means again now I'm banking on your ignorance because you, just because I tell you you have to do something that doesn't mean you have to do it, you know what I mean? Yeah, so but like, I feel like as an officer that that's a risk you're gonna take. If you're willing to do that as part yeah. of your job, be willing to do it on camera. Because if you believe that I that's the right you. way to do it, yeah. and the, the department, and it, it goes high enough up where this is the way you're taught, then that should eventually become the the okay way to do it. You know what I mean? But there, consider this for a second. There, there has to be a way that police officers can control the situation without violating people's rights, right? And that's a very difficult way. 
Like, well, that's what I'm saying. If if you can't do it on camera, then change the wording in the law or change the way something is written to yeah. where you can do it in a tactful way that's not violating somebody's rights. But there should never Obviously, be a situation yeah. where you have to turn off your camera so you can violate someone's rights to do your job correctly. Well, it's kind of like, you know, when I used to walk down the sidewalks in, uh, in New York City where police officers would just be like, all right, hey, everybody keep it moving. Don't hang out. Like, legally, they can't do that. I'm on a public sidewalk, right? But that's how they keep everybody moving and, like, that's how they control crowds and stuff like that. I understand it. It's kind of, again, it's kind of like uh, the DUI checkpoints, excuse me. <clears throat> like, they're obviously trying to prevent DUIs from happening and kids getting ran over by drunk drivers and stuff like that. Mm. But at what line do we, you know, we're sacrificing our freedoms for security. So do you that's think a big that's, no-go. Do you think that's the goal for that? Like, for example, like traffic cameras. Do you think the objective... Same thing. You think the objective is to stop speeders? I think the objective is... there. There's a huge... The well, objective is to raise funds. There, there, with there, those I think or, underneath, yes, but also... Um, that's it. Deterrence. If you, well, if you want to deter speeders, put speed bumps. Or you could just put a fake camera. <laughs> right. But when you have an actual camera that can send somebody a ticket, that and it's usually it's not it's not too prominent. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I, uh, I believe our law funds. enforcement's definitely overreaching, especially with the cameras and stuff like that. Yeah. I believe actually, and I, this is something that I actually wanted to research that police officers cannot take pictures uh, or or video of any private citizen, all of us, unless we're in the act of like committing crimes, right? Yeah, or stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. So it makes me wonder the legality of those cameras. The, how about even a body camera? Like, if you're not suspected of a right. crime, how could they even have that on while they exactly. interact with you? Well, technically, they're supposed to turn it on as they're like exiting their vehicle for something they're investigating. Okay, like if they pull you over. Yeah, but the, the, what he was saying, what Jay was saying about like cameras for traffic. There's right, right, right. No excuses. Right. But then you can just go like back to saying it's we're security for everybody. Well, and that's the thing. So we, as the private citizens, citizens, we're allowed to film our our public servants, our law enforcement people. You know, people that we pay through our tax money. We're allowed to to film what they're doing to, for accountability purposes. They are not allowed to film us. But for whatever reason, those cameras. You know, out in public. I don't know who voted for that. I don't know. It's almost, again, it's like, you know, let's go back to the old conversation of instead of serving us, now they rule us. Oh, yeah. Like who? who so you're saying to me that the community in Providence decided they voted on that? They wanted those? Or are you just doing that? Right, yeah. Because, you know, like there's never, just like adding new tolls, you know, or electric rate yes. increases. Like who the fuck is asking the all of the people that pay electric bills if we want to vote on higher rates. Right. You know what I mean? Nobody's saying yes to this. Right. Exactly. It's a sad way this world's going. But hey, man, what can you do? All you can do is fucking take care of your own, bro. Make enough money to stay ahead of the rat race and not worry if shit hits the fin. Yeah. You know, I think it's uh, when I see a lot of people get, getting super into politics and really like worried about who the president or anybody is. It's really President's never any skin puppet. off my ass because at the end of the day, dude, there's very little shit that's going to happen that's going to affect your everyday life. You're still going to, no matter what happens, you're going to have to wake up, go to you're going to have to go do your thing, you're going to have to pay your bills, put some money away, take care of your family. You know what I mean? That's never going to change. No matter who's in charge, what laws change, who can do what. Yeah, you know you're right. Saying? You're absolutely right. Um, so anyways, man. There's some people out there that believe that we live in like the Hunger Games type shit where there's just like these powerful elites oh, that's that a crazy one you know I, lo I love watching those realistic type of would you call that like dystopian type fucking um like sci-fi movies you know it's so but it's it gets realistic. you thinking yeah it gets you thinking because <laughs> like, dude is it's that like, real <laughs> yeah you know what i mean like that that could happen or like something even a bit more of a stretch is like you ever watch mad max the new one yeah. You know, like when there's a water shortage. Yes, and they're you know, controlling and like, all the water. Bro, it's like how much everything else gets put on the back burner when water is now a luxury. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, dude, I was like... Well, imagine guys. if they did that to us. Imagine if the powers that be control... I, I, I think in a smaller sense, I think they they do. Oh, yeah. 
the major companies. I think it was the owner of Nestle. He was saying at one point, he was like, you know, the access to to free and clean water is not a, a right. A right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying to buy like, that whoa, shit. what Trying the fuck the is this guy to fresh water? Imagine if all these powerful elitists, you know, controlled the air that we breathe. You're like, oh, no, we got the clean air over here. We're polluting all your shit. We don't care. Yeah, in California, bro, everybody's fucking breathing in smog. But, yeah, man, I like I like movies like that, specifically The Hunger Games, dude. You know, like, it's such a dope movie, but it's like. That was a great it movie. It seems out of the realms of possibility, but it's really not. At all. Know? Like, shit, shit could really hit the fan, and that's how it could be. And that's an easy way to keep people in line and remind them of, hey, the government is here to help. It's so Fuck bad. You. We're gonna give you a little bit of food all the time. I think people are—they don't yeah. even trust the government anymore. Well, most people do. You know what I mean? It's like a lot of people like to talk about not trusting the government, but when shit goes down, who's the first people they call the cops? You know what I mean? Yeah, and even that's kind of falling apart. Yeah. I actually, dude, I saw a preview for a movie that's coming out next year that looks sick. It's um, who's the fucking actor in it? Who's the actor that plays uh? Um, who's that fucking dark Jedi, bro, in the new Star Wars movies? Kylo Ren? Is that his name? Who's the actor that plays Kylo Ren? Oh, uh... Tall dude, big nose. Looks Jewish. Dark hair. I forgot his name, but... Adam Driver? Is that him? Oh, wait, that's not who I was thinking of, but is that him? (laughs) Handsome fella? Oh, yeah, that's him. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, he's got a movie coming out next year, and he just, you know... He kind of, like, is stuck in this abandoned, like, broken-down space shuttle, right, coming, you know, flying throughout the universe, whatever, and he lands on Earth. You know, he's from another country, yeah. and he lands on Earth, and it's like, you know, there's no people around, but you know what is around? Fucking dinosaurs. So the movie is set, like, 60 million or however long ago dinosaurs were, you know, 70 million years ago, billion, yeah. I don't know what the number is. But in this fucking reality, he's from another planet or another solar system where they were so far advanced as humans they could travel throughout the universe and i was like dude this is kind of wild man yeah like that's something it's hard to see these new concepts for movies because there's so many fucking movies do you believe that there's other life form out there i believe that you'd be crazy not to believe that yeah there's just it's so much bro so much space dude (laughs) so much things like places around. how could how could it not be bro you know like we don't, there's alien life here in the ocean we don't even know about you know what i mean <laughs> never mind other planets well you know so but, well why do you think that why, why do you think just because of uh space alone like meaning uh the amount of mass yeah, the amount yeah. of yeah. yeah all right it just it would I don't know, bro. It's far fetched to think that there's not life anywhere else. Well, you ever heard of the um Like even if you think there's even if you're like religious and you believe in God. Yeah. The thing that God just fucking narrowed it down to just one little planet, bro, in this crazy solar system with his other solar systems and um other galaxies, bro, all throughout the universe is wild, bro. Well, what, you know, like when somebody like think had, about anybody that's you know an investor, they yeah. fucking diversify their portfolio. He's not gonna put all his eggs in one basket, just one little rock, bro. He's got fucking billions of rocks. He's gonna be like this one. That's it. Everything but, else is wasted. Just this one. Hell no. Bro. Well, think think about this. Like everything that we know that in the visible in our visible <laughs> scope, right? Uh, we don't know of any other life out there. We have other planets. We have you know, we don't have any proof of. However, I, you know, personally, I do believe that there's other life, but I'm saying, um, yeah, so when I say other life, I'm, I'm let me ask more along this, the lines of you, like, do you not believe in dinosaurs? Of course I do. We have the fossil record for them. Where the fuck were you so, going with that? Because I mean, like, because you believe in obviously like, you know, like God, you're, you're a religious man or you're spiritual, whatever the word is. So God created dinosaurs, right? That would be the yeah, thing. Yeah, right. Yeah. Is there any talk of that in the Bible? Well, no, because no. it was man written. Like they wouldn't know, right? So, just help me understand this. So, God created dinosaurs. Yeah, and then everything He does is intentional. Like, does He fuck up? No, there is no fucking up. So God doesn't fuck up. Well, at, uh, so there are dinosaurs. Like, why did He just decide to eradicate them? When you say fuck up, we, so you're you're using a man- mistake. Well, no, you're using uh, on man's level what we consider fucked up, right? Okay. So is there, are you just playing, not playing, but like, are we going the route of, well, I just don't understand how God thinks as to why he would put dinosaurs on the earth and then kill them all? Oh, I don't know. I'm trying to just follow where you're, where I'm you're going. I'm asking you. Do you, oh, do you have sorry. any idea? What, I know you don't know, bro. Like, I'm not asking. No. 
Well, the tell first me definitively what God was thinking. <laughs> yeah, like, so first of all, the, the Bible doesn't is not a an all inclusive account of history. Just because it's not in the Bible, it doesn't mean it didn't happen. No, because there like, no people to write it. Right. Well, the Bible was specifically um, an influence. I don't want to get off topic, though. I right. want to stay on mine. So but I, I just want to, uh, uh, in these guidelines, in okay. these boundaries. Fuck the Bible. I won't even bring up the Bible again. The Bible is irrelevant. Okay, this okay go ahead. So let's say, uh, you know, if you believe the, you know, God yeah. created everything. Yeah. He created dinosaurs, obviously. Of course. Why, why kill them all? Why get rid of them? I don't know. I was hoping you were going to go. More in depth with that, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's the that's the simple answer. But the same thing is, you know, he created humans and then he wiped them all off the earth, except for like eight or something like that during what? the flood. Yeah, because they were doing exactly what we're supposedly doing today, just on a higher, uh, you know, to just not following his ways. And all of a sudden, he got pissed off and he was like, you know what, fuck these guys. I'm gonna wipe them. I'm gonna kill them all, except for Noah and like his family. So. But yeah, back that to that, that movie. Fish. I thought that was uh, <laughs> it's intriguing, and I'm excited to see it. You know, because that's something that I, I haven't seen done in any movies that I've seen. Combining fucking, you know, modern technology with dinosaurs. I mean, there's Jurassic Park, obviously. Yeah. But this is a whole different dynamic. You know. It's called sixty-five. Sixty-five. Yeah. So sixty-five billion years ago, or million? Is it million or billion? Million dinosaurs. Well, yeah. I think the what the Earth is only like. 14.5 or 13.5 million or billion years billion. old. Or no, like dinosaurs are at least 65 million years. It's yeah. like 65,000. So, right, right, yeah. Yeah, so 65, that's so many years, bro. Holy shit. I'm just thinking, like, again, yo, what happened? How do we kid? know there's dinosaurs, bro? Like, who's proving that fossils? How do they time? How do you know it's 65 million years? That's Carbon so dating. far, bro. Carbon dating, who's. You know what? I got. I'm gonna become a scientist and really figure this shit out. Well, because dude, to be quite honest and frank, carbon dating is not like the most. It's our. I think it's one of our most exact ways of dating something. Yo, think of how long a year takes, bro. Yeah, and then a hundred years. Yeah, and think of the difference between a hundred and a million. And you're telling me mm. we can figure out something with sixty five million years. And that's where it gets kind of crazy. And that's why to evolutionists were creationists. To me, it gets like, crazy after fucking 200, bro. Anything <laughs> yeah. after 200 seems a bit suspect. I'm going to be honest, dude. Like yeah. 1776, is that when like America started? I don't know, dude. Like, are we even sure? Do we even know if we use the same way of counting 300 years ago that we do today? What if they were counted by tens, bro? Yeah, they could have totally lied to us. <laughs> bro. I don't know if I believe in dinosaurs anymore. That number's too big. 65 million is too big. Well, yeah, we but we have physical proof of dinosaurs. I don't trust that proof. You're like, that 18-foot femur bone, that's a human. <laughs> Could be fucking just a rock, bro. A, a fake-ass rock. A rock <laughs> shaped in a, in a, as a dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, all right. So now, I guess what I'm saying, I believe that dinosaurs obviously existed because yeah. of the fossils. I might question the the time. You know, like if, I don't know, bro. Like, yeah, how do you go from like, up. all right? What if it was twenty thousand years ago? Maybe that's more realistic than sixty five million, bro. Well, I'll tell you, that's, that's such a big ass number. So there's certain like uh, elements in the universe, right, that naturally um, change over time. Let's say, I, and I, I don't know exactly and i'm going to use like just arbitrary elements let's say like lead over time turns into uranium like i think that's scientific fact right and that's how like we we can date certain things because true, we true. know that there's lead somewhere and it hasn't changed over let's say a million years so right, we're like right, okay right. so we know that around this time x y and z now that's not carbon dating but um there's how certain the ways they of know? finding how do they know how how something changes over a million years how do you know that? Like, because there's who's like half lives. Confir who's and, confirming that shit? Like, yeah, true. No, this was led a million years ago. <laughs> but man, there's a lot of weird shit out there, man. This have you so have weird, you ever heard man. of like the double? Oh, what is what the fuck is it called? Where double D's? Yeah, double D's. Uh, physicists, astro uh, astro. No, it's a uh, theoretical physicist or whatever the fuck they're called. They literally proved that. Everything that we know about life and existence doesn't is not true. <laughs> Great, like, bro. what does that even mean? What are you talking about? Like, they they found that like we're all in the matrix. Yeah, like particles at, at the same time can be two different forms. 
And they're like, wait a minute, what? There's like solids, liquids, gases. How is it? But they proved they proved it. And then it's like, you know, they, they ask questions like, okay, if we're all made of like mo uh, molecules and all these particulate, uh, like most of what we're made of is all space. How come we can't walk through a wall, you know, because in between the molecules is all space. There's more space in us than there is matter. Yeah, I know. I'm getting into like some what the weird fuck ass are you guy. Talking about? <laughs> You're talking about like fucking subatomic space particles and shit. What are you, Ant Man? How are you gonna walk yeah, through man, a wall? Yeah, man, it's guy? fucking crazy when you dive into like like metaphysics and fucking. I don't know. Why, why can't shit? we walk through walls, bro? What the yeah. fuck is what? <laughs> you know, like an electron. You like see like the you know like the you have the nucleus and then you have like protons, electrons, or whatever the fuck it's called. A cell. A t a t atoms. Right. A cell has or, a proton, neutrons. No, electrons. not a cell. Uh, no. no an, an atom, an atom. It has like its nucleus, and then it has like these protons, neutrons floating around it, or appearing. What's the mitochondria, I powerhouse of the yeah. cell. Yes, is that what they thought? <laughs> <laughs> but what what somebody's saying is that because if we're all made of atoms, right, and atoms are like ninety nine percent made of space, then we're ninety nine percent made of space. And how come you definitely got some space going on? In yeah, your, uh, right in between my ears, airhead. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, <clears throat> I don't know. Let's get a little else? fucking deep. You got anything else you want to talk about? I'm I got everything I want to talk about. Oh, the poker thing, bro. I wanted to. I told you I've been tracking. Yeah, how you doing? Good. Um, I think though, I think I'm gonna start a little vlog, similar to like uh, you know, like Rampage, how he just goes records some hands, a yeah. bunch of hands, and then like edits it later and yep, talks yep. about the hand. But I, like more every like, other more vlogger like out a, there. Yeah, exactly. You know how these vloggers do? They like record shit and then talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> nah, I kind of uh, I want to do like a challenge, you know, and see if I can spin the bankroll up to like 50k or 100k or something. And of course like, you can. Why almost can't like you? just vlog the journey to getting there. Yeah. Well, I mean, you say why can't you? Like it's simple, but it takes some discipline, you know, like discipline in the sense of like not mixing the money up with other money and being disciplined enough to play consistently, you know, because right now my playing is very reactive. If a game pops off near me, I play it. I don't make it a point to go to casinos and make sure I'm putting in hours. You know what I mean? Right. So there are a couple of things that I could do. Um, you know, maybe not go and play socially as much and get, you know, cocked and just gamble and actually be disciplined to play the correct way. But I think it'd be cool to see if and how long I could spin it up to, you know, a, a good amount. I full wholeheartedly think that you can do that. I mean, and I think just, uh, I think you and I should. I told you the other day, like, like yo, let's get a little bet going, see who can get to like fifty k the quickest. Well, that's a, that's a, that's actually a tough uh, challenge because why we'd have to well to I, I played more than you, right? Um, I put in more hours than you. So we'd have to maybe, have like the same exact you know what, hours. Maybe we could say, who you know puts, what I'm saying. We could the bet could be whose bankroll is higher yeah. after X amount of hours. Yeah. You know, like after seven hundred hours or whatever. But those hours have to be done by December or else I forfeit the bet. Because it wouldn't be fair if like you're way ahead. Yeah. And then I'm just like, well, I'm not gonna hit seven hundred hours, so I'm never gonna have to pay you. You know what I mean? Like right, I right. have to get those hours in by a deadline or I just forfeit and pay up. You know, we could talk about details, but I think that'd be cool. I think it'd be cool to recap every week. You know what I mean? Like share where you're at, where I am. Oh yeah, hmm. that could be like a whole nother like a uh, thing, like a dual documenting dual YouTube channel. Yeah, the J two Poker Challenge. Poker Challenge. <laughs> oh, I kind of <laughs> like it, bro. I kind of like it. But anyways, um, are we done? <laughs> sure. Are we done, George? Are we done? How much time we got? Where are we at, bro? Two minutes until the average. All right. So what can we do for the next two minutes? <laughs> well, I could have sex four times. All right. <laughs> hey, All right. Wrap that up. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Peace out, everybody. Later, later. <laughs>